Howdy y'all, it's George Smith. Excuse the video quality, I'm shooting this off my cell phone because I'm going undercover to show you a few reasons why I think buying a production grade spec home like this one is a bad idea. So at first glance, these don't look that bad. I mean, there's good brick, there's stone, there's hardy plank siding. The design, eh, not that great, pretty uninspired, they all look the same. But I'm putting all of that aside and just looking at the build quality. At first glance, it doesn't look that bad. Even from the inside, I mean, the garage here looks well finished. I mean, your hot water heater's well plumbed. The drywall finish looks good. Coming inside, you've got the same thing. You've got decent finishes. The fixtures are cheap. The floor is fake. The appliances are cheap. But this is a starter grade home. I don't fault it for any of that. What I do fault it for is what I'm about to show you next. Behind me, you see this house wrap. Now this house wrap is the same house wrap that Matt and I uh, showed a few episodes ago over on the build show, and we sprayed it with water, and it leaked through, and it doesn't do anything for waterproofing. It barely does anything for shedding bulk water, but it's definitely not waterproof. That on top of sheathing can be a problem. Here though, they go one worse, way worse. They don't even sheathe the houses. So we have got our studs, so they frame the home, and then they put this woven product, not waterproof, not airtight, it's a feel good something that helps shed some bulk water, but it's definitely not a waterproof barrier. They just nail it directly to their studs, and then they clad over the top of this. There is no sheathing on this house at all. Where their racking strength comes from, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure that this was probably engineered. Right? It had, sure, it's probably engineered. I don't know. But where's the racking strength? I don't see any, any crossbars, any way of tightening this thing together. I think that all the racking strength is just coming from their siding here. And this siding is a hardy board siding. <laughs> it doesn't give you any. Okay, so I just found one way that they're taking care of racking strength. You see these metal straps here that are running from corner to corner of the garage. So I guess that they are depending on just the walls to hold up most of it. And then where they have large expanses, they're doing a, um, a cross tie metal. But here in the main living room, just in case you thought that, well, that was only in the garage. Maybe they didn't do the same thing in the living space. We have the same thing. That is hardy plank siding on the outside. This is that woven wrap WRB stapled directly to the studs. Now it's not all terribly bad. Up here on the air conditioning behind me, I'm not a big fan of flex duct usually, um, except for in short runs, short straight runs. But they did a good job on this. It is a nicely installed flex duct system. So AC looks well installed. What else looks in well installed is their electrical and plumbing. So anything that there is a, um, a code requirement on, AC electrical plumbing, and you have to have a license, AC electrical plumbing, it looks like they are following code. And as the codes progress, they are forced to do better and better jobs. And then you'll find professionals on those three, those three um, fields will get better and better and do better and better work on higher end homes. And so when they come and do a lower end job like this, all of those tips and tricks will flow down and you end up with a nicely installed mechanical system to the home. But the waterproofing is not as advanced on the code and the people that are working on them aren't required to keep up any type of license. So you usually see a lot of things that might be cold code compliant and not done very well or not up to code at all and people just don't know any better. Look at how they flash these windows here. So this is that asphalt back stuff and they're just, they're just sticking it on there that's you know barely applied to anything. That's gonna leak. It's a matter of time before that's gonna leak. Now, up top, they've got some sort of flashing that they're going to be trying to do there. I don't know what that is. 
Um, but it's not right. It's, it's, we'll see. We'll see, but I'm less than confident that this is all going to be flashed correctly. So for insulation, you can't tell it here, but they are using a fiberglass insulation. I can fill it back there through that little hole in the electrical uh, cutout for the, the receptacle there. Um, I don't know how they're doing the air sealing. If it's just cladding, cheap WRB that's not tape, that's just letting air through like a sieve, then sheetrock with a bunch of holes around all of the, all of the plugs, I don't know how they're hitting their numbers for the air sealing. It's not real tight in this part of the world, but still, um, I don't know. And the list of poor building practices go on and on and on. And the reason that I am so passionate about this is because the average homeowner has no idea what's behind the walls. If it's got a pretty coat of paint on it and granite countertops and stainless steel appliances, then they think it's a quality homes. These homes are selling for $150 a square foot. So they're not an expensive home, but they're not a cheap home. You know, you're looking at 225, 250 for these houses. That's a lot of money for somebody to invest and these aren't going to last. It may not affect the first owner, it may not affect the second. By owner number three, they're going to have to put major repair uh, investment into these houses. They're just not going to last. More than likely, they'll just get run down, run down, run down, and somebody will bulldoze them, and somebody else will build something like this and start the whole cycle over again. So if you're looking for a new home, choose your builder carefully. You don't have to spend top dollar to get a good builder. Choose your finishes wisely, Keep your square footage, most important, keep your square footage small. Don't go with a crazy big house. And then proper knowledge of building science and the proper way of building stuff is key. Find yourself a good builder who understands these things. And if you're a builder and you're building in something like this and you go home and you don't sleep good at night, stop it. Go find a company that will pay you to do good quality good craftsmanship and build homeowners a home that they can be proud of and will last for a long time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe below if we've earned it. Comment below. Talk to me about what you're seeing out there in the industry. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Let's start a conversation on how we can make sure that we make craftsmanship great again. I'll see you next time on Jordan Smith Builds.